Um, one, it's one, you know, it's the result of being a contributor in the open source. It's like meeting amazing people from around the world. I can I consider him a friend. So, you know, um, that's a result of contributing to open source. So, hola, yo soy Christos. Um, this is the only Spanish that I kind of know. I mean, I know some other stuff. How to order a beer. Uh, una cerveza, por favor. Gracias, gracias. From where, depends on where, from where you're coming from. Uh, <laughs> I know some other slang as well, but let's not go there. <laughs> and um, let me briefly introduce myself. I mean, uh, Luis, make a great introduction. Um, I'm Christos Baharakis, uh, the code contributor, senior program uh, manager. I'm Greek. Uh, that's why the accent, Spanish speaking people and Greek people who have similar accent, actually, when we speak in English. Funny story, I was in Spain and I was speaking in English and people, the guy was like, why are you speaking in English to me and not in Spanish? You clearly speak Spanish. I was like, no, 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 yo soy griego. Uh, in any case, <laughs> I've been involved in open source communities since 2007. Um, I need to update from where you got the information, Luis. Uh, it's 2007, actually. It's been a long time. I uh, started with Fedora Project uh, back then, my first love, and then continued with uh, Mozilla, uh, Firefox OS days. If you're familiar, the Latam area was like super famous. I've been doing a lot of localization, um, some packaging, uh, uh, community management, community mentorship, and I'm a proud founding member of a hackerspace in Thessaloniki, which uh, unfortunately is not around anymore. But still, um, I'm really happy about the opportunities that I had as an open source uh, contributor. I'm uh, also a proud member of Mozilla's former open innovation team. Um, part of the work that we have been doing in the, during that time is going to be presented today. And, uh, you know, other than tech, I love basketball and nature. And I'm really keen to explore different flavors, specifically around food and coffee uh, and cultures from around the world. So if you have a coffee place um, around you, you know, that makes good coffee, please put it in the notes in this um either on slack or here in the in the comments i'm really keen into um <laughs> into uh visiting it and trying um play, uh, coffee places from around the world so today i will be uh presenting about the open by design approach about being open by design and generally within one sentence, the open by design approach describes a set of methods and best practices for meaningfully engaging community throughout your product or project development process, um, which is going to contribute towards your success and impact. The, um, all these findings are a, pro, uh, it's a result of a research that was conducted by the Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design, along with the um, open innovation team at Mozilla. So, you know, the research is like why we do, why we want to adopt an open, why do we want to be open by design, why we want to adopt open practices. It's, um, it's really simple. Uh, the research has identified around 12 key potential benefits that you can have uh, across three um, categories by simply adopting open practices and meaningfully engaging community. And this is the key for today's, let me go one slide back. And this is the key for today's um, presentation is like how we can meaningfully engage community towards our product or project success in a really meaningful and healthy and engaging um, way. So um, to give you an example, one of the, for example, by meaningfully en engaging with the community, you can improve your problems definition or you can improve your product um, and services, which will lead to driving better through better products and, um, sorry, driving preference through better products and services. Or by meaningfully engaging um, the community, you can expand your workforce or you can increase access to knowledge and skills, um, which will lead to lowering product development and operating your costs. Or another example, by meaningfully engaging with the community, you can um, in facilitate compatibility, you can incentivize adoption, which will lead to increasing market share. 
but let's talk more about, okay, these are some of the benefits. Let's see how we can do all these things, how we can, um, how can we adapt open um, practices? How does that look like? By the way, um, I'm logged into the chat. So feel free if you have any questions or if you have any comments, feel free to post them there. I will keep an eye. I'm gonna have some time in the end for um, for questions as well. And I'm gonna pause in specific slides for that. So the research has identified six ways, three approaches, three let's six frameworks on how to build value together with a community or an organization. The first one is something that is really familiar with most of us here is the gifting approach, which is the um, no strings attached um, giving of valued products or services. A great example is the Android, which is gifted to everyone for free to the develop. It's a development platform. You can consider it a development platform and it is gifted to developers to encourage new uses um, by developers for building applications and so on. So that's the gifting framework. The creating together framework, it's something that it's relatively famous among um, open source software projects, projects that you just go on the repo and just have them there and you have people engage with them. It's the idea behind, you know, publishing a project saying that this is a project I want to, to, to create, to make, and these are the ways you can contribute and you can have people contributing to your project. It's like sharing the task and costs of achieving a pre-established goal, which is the goal that you said, you said, <clears throat> sorry, we're gonna spend um, more time into spe this specific approach later because I think this is the most famous, the most familiar with everyone. And I think it's the most impactful and um, worth on spending more time. The soliciting ideas framework, which is using a community to generate ideas and solutions. I mean, the Lego ideas platform, for example, it allows people to come up with ideas about new Lego features, figures or kits, and you can have community um, upvote uh, some of them and then Lego makes into production. Uh, this approach is a great opportunity for you as well, for anyone who wants to create a new product, a new project, or they want to evolve it and gather input from their community or from any community on um, product vision. <clears throat> the um, learning through use, um, the method for collecting, analyzing activity to improve products or services. This is something that Spotify does well through the Discover Weekly that learns from user tastes and then creates playlists that are tailored to its user. All, um, telemetry that a lot of browsers use, anonymized information that's gonna help them understand what's going well or doesn't um, in order to improve their products. That's another way that you can engage the community, your community. Exchanging value exchange, another um, method. Um, it's a method around adding value to or using exchanges via your technology or service. A great example is the Be My Eyes uh, company, it's an organization that it helps people who it supports people that they cannot see they're 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 blind to see by connecting them with sighted people so the idea is that they get insights from that uh, so they provide value to people who cannot see but at the same time they get some value from them in a way that they get insights that helps them build new products or um, give them to third third parties and another familiar um um, method or framework is the networking common interest. It's like coordinating to ensure individual activities achieve more towards a certain mission. To give you an example, um, this year, this actually this month, uh, GitLab turns 10, 10 years old. Well, um, and in, a, in the effort of celebrating that, we're organizing um, community events around the world, uh, we, online events, and um, each event is going to have a different theme, it's different goal, but all of them are contributing towards the goal of awareness around GitLab, how you can use it, and how you can contribute to GitLab. This is, it's an open source um, product. By the way, there is a link down to the source. I'm going to share the, um, let me actually share them now, hit the ender. Uh, on Slack, I'm sharing my um, slide deck there in case that you're interested to go through there 
through all the links. Oh, and I need to go to the next slide. Okay, let's dive a bit more into the creating together approach. For me, it's one of the most important one, and it's one of the ones that I've not I've seen and um, out in the out in the open source world. So, how can we um, how can we apply the creating together framework for developing an um, an open source an open source project? <clears throat> First and most importantly, accessibility and discoverability. When you go there, when you're a maintainer of an idea and you want to you know, engage, create a community around it, or just put it out there and see what happens, um, you need to communicate. You need to have a documentation in place. You need to have a stellar documentation around what is the goal of the product or the project, what is the mission, why we want to do that, who are we, you know? Um, and, and, and as well, a detailed contributing guide, right? In terms of you want to get contributors, great. You need to have a detailed contribution guide, to contributing guide with all the technologies that this person needs to at least understand and some expectations that you might have from community. To give you an example, um, a simple a simple addition of, for example, the time of uh, that is going to averagely take someone to set up the development environment. It's something that it's super easy to do, and also it saves develop uh, contributors a lot of time. Um, so if you say that in an average it takes ten minutes to set up your development environment, if I'm a contributor and I want to contribute to, to the project, and I'm like thirty minutes trying to set up the development environment, I'm like, okay, something is wrong. I need to get in contact with the person and seek for help. And it's equally important to set up methods and which people can use to get in contact with you. Um, another important area is aligning on priorities and communicating in the open. What I'm trying to say here is that most of the times, you know, you open an open source project, you leave it there, and I've, I've seen from maintainers who are like, hey, I'm reviewing this merge request, and I that's not something that it's not important for our project, so I'm, I'm going to have either to delay it or I'm not going to accept it at all. And and people compl and the maintainers complain that why they don't get meaningful contributions for people, and this is because contributors don't know what is important for your product or your project. They don't know what what you need to do right now. So it's important as a maintainer to release at least a lightweight version of your roadmap, if not the full of it. So to understand, so you have the community understand that hey. For this month, I want to focus on that. For this month, I want to focus on that. For the end of the year, that's the goal at the end of the year. It's equally important, all your issues, to be well documented and well labeled and weighted. What does it mean? It's like, if I'm a contributor, I need to understand what is the issue that you're describing here. If, I want, if you want me to work on that, you need to give me all the necessary information. What is the expected outcome? How I can approach this? Um, and whether this is important or not. That way, I can help you while I'm improving my skills, while I'm contributing to a project that I care about. And of course, it's also important to be open and supportive. It doesn't, it's like people, com the community, they want to dedicate your time, their time and resources to you, to your product, to your project. You also need to dedicate to some resources for them. For a good recommendation is to have office hour calls for supporting community and also gathering feedback. I mean, office hour calls in a weekly base or by weekly base or a monthly base, whenever you can, can help you have a specific dedicated time and space for you to support the community, for have community come up, come back with ideas, but at the same time to gather feedback about the onboarding process, about the product, about how how you want to move forward. Um, this, and this is just the first step. You can open it. You can be like, let's have strategic meetings about how we move forward with this project. And also, it's important to allocate resources for reviewing MRs and PRs on a timely manner. A lot of times, you know, um, especially when you have organization companies that have a, that they are um, companies, proper companies that are open source, not they don't always allocate resources for community contributions. As a result, you have people opening merge requests which are laying around for weeks and months, and they're not even partially reviewed. 
or trials. So the idea is that you need to allocate resources, time, review time for you to go through or for your team to go through all the MRs and PRs and make sure that they provide feedback um, and also they, yeah, provide feedback and review that in a timely manner. And I want to stress out the differences between being open by design and being open by default. I mean, you need to be mindful of the reasons behind open sourcing a project. Um, most of most of the times, people, maintainers, or companies, they go there. I'm going to open source. It. That's it. I'm just open source the source code, and that's it. They don't. That's it. They don't have. They don't have. They don't communicate priorities. They don't allocate resources for reviewing um, um, MRs. Um, it's like it's important before doing it to to understand. It's being open by design demands clarity on why you're doing it. What is the what is why you're doing this? Why you want to open it? And what is the intended outcome you want to have to create a community of contributors? You want to create a community of testers. You want to get feedback for your um, for your project. Do you want to gather data that is going to uh, help you build an uh, ML model? So it's really important when you want to go open to have a purpose to understand why you want to do that. And this label here, this um, uh, graph here, can help you, you know, understand. What are the needs that you have to you want to address and how you can um, address them? So <clears throat> I I hope I gave you some, some information about how to be open um, by design uh, and why to be open uh, by design. Um, these are some practical details on how to do that. Um, I also want to invite you all uh, before going into the questions uh, uh, part, I want to invite you all into uh, our Hacktoberfest initiative, since we're all here to contribute uh, and everyone is interested to contribute. You all know Hacktoberfest. This time around, uh, it's the first time that Hacktoberfest supports GitLab, which means that you can contribute to projects that are hosted in GitLab and also GitHub, GitLab itself, not only just GitHub. Uh, and there's going to be special swag for everyone other than the October 1st swag. There's going to be special um, GitLab swag for that. You'll always get a coffee mug when you have your first MR merged, when you contribute to a GitLab project. And you're going to have some also special uh, hack um, swag for people uh, that contribute throughout this month and the top five, uh, the people with the most MRs merged um, for this month. So check out the link 